Okay, so I'm back in Dallas, Texas, and I know I have to get a meat restaurant in there. I went to FT33 last time. Now I'm trying Pecan Lodge. So it's pronounced Pecan, not Pecan. Look it up, it's pronounced Pecan. So the lineup isn't bad yet, but usually there are lineups, and they do sell out of meat early. Okay, never mind. I walked inside, and the lineup is crazy. Look at this. So here you have their signature brisket. This is the lean pulled pork, jalapeno sausage, regular sausage, pork ribs, beef rib on the bone, a hot mess, look at that, a whole bunch of sides. The brisket is amazing. Here's the charred part of the beef rib. That's my favorite part right there. So you have Auntie Polly's banana pudding, Texas tumbleweed cookies, and homemade peach cobbler. Look at this. That's banana pudding. Look at these cookies. Look at these. it has got pretzels, chocolate chip cookies. They're massive cookies. Look at all that. So the story behind Pecan Lodge is that chef and owner Justin and his wife were sick of their corporate jobs. They wanted to follow their passion. They started as a home business doing barbecue and they started selling at the farmer's market. They picked up pace, now they have a retail location. They opened in 2010 and it's become iconic. So Texas prides themselves on their brisket more so than the pork because it's cattle town, right? And so the brisket here is smoked for 18 hours and it's less about the sauces, Texas style barbecue, more about the dry rubs. They have barbecue sauce here, a vinegar based one and a tomato based one. I didn't even touch either because the meats were so flavorful. So definitely things you can't miss here is the beef brisket, the bone in beef rib, fantastic. The fried chicken, you think fried chicken ain't good at a barbecue place? This is grandma's recipe, double fried, fantastic, juicy, crunchy, beautiful, and the hot mess, which I am right now. It's the sweet potato loaded with pulled pork, fantastic. It's a jasmine sea essence. Um, it's over a bed of seaweed and dry ice, and that pushes that beautiful aroma up so you can kind of get a little hint of salinity with your big eye ahi tuna. It's like a creamy egg corn custard with caviar and chunks of lobster and like a creme brulee crisp topping. I just want to cry. It's beautiful. So this is the milk and honey bee pollen with ginger and Texas blackberries. Mmm. I feel like I'm chewing on honeycomb. The semi Play-Doh. So good. I feel like I'm outdoors. God, my flight is delayed because I almost missed it. Ordering an extra two dishes at Flora Street Cafe and running on an almost empty tank of gas. <sighs> So this is a really important restaurant to the Texas food scene because it's opened by chef and owner, and owner Stephen Powles, who's very respected. He's one of the founding fathers of Southwestern cuisine. So in 1983, he opened up Bruce Street Cafe, which is a business casual restaurant a few blocks away from Flora. And then uh, after 10 years, he closed it down. Now he opened Flora Street Cafe, which plays half 80s music as a hats off to Bruce Street, and then uh, classical music uh, representing Flora Street. 
So Flora Street Cafe is one of his latest restaurants that opened in Dallas's art district. So it's all about presentation as well as culinary artistry. And if you look inside, there's like oh, there's like this beautiful silk tapestry that falls down at intervals. And then there's all these beautiful art pieces. And as for the food, it represents new Texas cuisine. So that's a mix of Southwestern comforting dishes as well as Creole, Cajun influences, Tex-Mex, Mexican influences. And so you really get an elevated version of what Texas dining is about and Texas food is about. I wanted to showcase different sides of the culinary scene in Texas. So FT33 being a little bit lighter, more vegetable focused, and then uh, Pecan Lodge, the amazing barbecue that you dream of coming from Texas. And last but not least, we had Flora Street Cafe, which is a very refined side of what Texas cuisine is about.